Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. All ready to go? I hope you can hear me clearly enough. I think I've got this microphone correct. I haven't done a very good job of um, hiding the wires. I think I would make a very bad police informant or a, you know, <laughs> a gang, gangland snitch. So, um, uh, I'm uh, Daniele Procida. Uh, I'll be talking about um, Whitetail in the Cloud. So, that's me. That's what I look like on television. Um, <laughs> I am hyphen software. It's my favorite, <laughs> my favorite photograph on that. Um, I work for Divio. I'll be talking about that during this. We do cloud hosting for um, Python and Django, so people like you. Um, I am a member of the Django core team, and I'm vice president of the Django Software Foundation, which sounds glamorous, but which I'm glad about, but it's not really. And the other thing that I do a lot of is I'm involved with Python in Africa. So I've met Cody and Lisa. I've met Cody first in, in Namibia in 2016. So these are some of the PyCons that have uh, I've been involved in in different ways. Uh, I've been to uh, Namibia four times. I'm going to go to the first PyCon Ghana this year. And we have plans for the first Pan-African PyCon. So um, maybe you've never thought of going to a, a Python event in Africa. But consider it, they're different and a huge amount of fun. These are my friends from uh, Namibia. So that's one of the nicest things that I'm involved in. Very lucky that my the company I work for gives me the opportunity to be involved with that and is uh, very supportive. Uh, some contact details. So this, I don't really use Twitter. And the um, uh, best way to think is just come and talk to me. You know where to find me. So Wagtail in the Cloud, now that the title is problematic actually because um, I have a friend who's, as Tom mentioned, is a, a naturalist, so he gave me a bit of trouble over this last time. So he wasn't happy with this. So it, was, it was ornithologically incorrect. And um, he gave me a certain amount of, uh, of, of grief, grief about this. And, uh, um, this was when I was going to speak at the Wagtail Space Cons um, conference in Arnhem, which I've done a couple of times. Uh, I've been to a couple of times, and um, uh, then he heard that the conference was called Wagtail Space. He was really disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> so then he informed me that you know there are no wagtails in the New World. So Wagtail US is. Uh... <laughs> um, I'm going to be talking about Django deployment, or as we say in the business, you know, because Django deployment, you know, Django is lovely. You can do a tutorial, you can get a, a website running on your machine very quickly, and uh, for a developer, it's a wonderful thing. Actually, not just a developer, even if you're just an, uh, a programmer who is learning a bit of programming, what you can do with Django extremely quickly is uh, uh, amazingly powerful. And again, as Tom mentioned, you tr then try to get that thing on to the actual web in a way that's successful and, and so on, and that's a different kind of experience altogether. So um, in Django and, and Python, we offer this wonderful entry level for programmers, and then a horrendous stumbling block when it comes to putting it on the web. And you compare that with the experience of um, people who work with PHP and how easily they can do that, and how um, the, um, the progress from a website to, uh, from sorry, from development to having a website is completely seamless because they're working already with uh, a website that's being served, putting code into the same files that are just serving plain HTML. So you can understand how all those people got started with PHP uh, so quickly some um, some years ago. So it, it's a fairly horrendous um, experience, and one of the things that uh, we and I say we as in this wag this uh, Wagtail community, because it's very important for uh, projects like Wagtail. It's very important for anybody who's got an open source product in Django to be able to improve that. And um, it's important for us to, at Devio because that's what our business is partly about. It's about in, in improving that so that it's, nobody needs to, to swear about it. So I'm going to just go straight into a uh, live demo to show you some things that we can do. Um, so what could possibly be wrong? So, um, right, and 
to show you how brave I'm being, I'm going to go. So this is our, um, our control panel. Uh, now let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger for you. So how's that size? Okay. So this is our, our, our control panel. I've got three projects in there. Um, I'll come back to that in a moment. What I'm going to do first is open a um, private window. And I'm just going to do um, Let's just make that a bit smaller because it's a bit hard to see everything. That's a bit good. Sorry. That's good. We can see everything. Does everybody know the Django uh, Whitetail Bakery project? It's a, a very nice demo project with content populated for uh, Whitetail. I'm just going to click um, on my robot, and I'm not, and I'm going to launch this demo. And this is um, spooling up there. It's spooled up. It's deployed a demo for me now of the Wagtail Bakery project, and I can um, go through it and um, see all the pages. I can go, sorry, missed that button. I can go straight into the um, admin, because I'm already logged in, and do all the things. So, this means, <laughs> I mean, you saw how long it took to spool that up. I started at DBO uh, four years ago, and we were pretty excited then because we were able to get a project deployed to the web in about between 16 and 18 minutes. And I just did it now and a few seconds later I had a live project that somebody can now work with. So um, Tom said you, you could have a link somewhere on the Wagtail site. So there's going to be a button on the Wagtail site that says try a demo of Wagtail you'll get a 15 minute demo of this with the, the content. And it's the best possible way for somebody to experience a project because they can see screenshots of it and they can read the code and the readme and the documentation, but there's nothing compared to seeing something with actual content in it as opposed to a blank sheet or a blank screen because it doesn't give you the context. So this is um, extremely valuable for um, users to be able to understand what it is that you're trying to offer them. Um, so I won't spend too much time on the Whitetail Bakery project, although it is actually a really nice demo. And I understand from Tom that many Wagtail sites that are actually deployed look suspiciously like the Whitetail Bakery <laughs> demo. And there's a really good reason for that. And I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I think it's Per makes perfect sense for somebody not to start with a blank page, especially when it's their first thing. It makes a lot of sense to take something and adapt it and make it their own. And if people are doing this with the bakery project, I think that means that actually you've got a really good demo here. And then you, you, that should be, um, uh, uh, you should cherish that because I think that's working for you if that's happening. Um, <coughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, oh yes, I was showing you. It, it, it's the, it's the demo, it's going to last for 15 minutes, here's our little uh, timer, and um, it'll invite you to create an account so you can actually have uh, uh, projects of your own. Because after 15 minutes, this is going to, it's going to expire. <coughs> we can, oh, by the way, why don't you go now, right now, to this website. You can do it yourselves. You can go to dvo.com slash wagtail. Like that. And uh, that's what we're Nemo.com slash wagtail, we can serve, I think, something like 80 of these 15 minute demos per hour. So, as long as not every single person who reads Hacker News jumps on it, we'll be able to serve up these, uh, all, all these um, uh, demos for them. So, we're really pleased about this because we, we don't just do it for um, um, Wagtail, we do it for, I'm, I'm a, a Django CMS core developer, so the, a Django CMS is um, uh, uh, a DVO product, uh, product, and I want to do, is it, um, do it. let me do it in a, no I have to do it here, sorry. Um, 
I'm sure that's not, I'm sure that's going to be a four, yeah, of course it is. Sorry, I've, I've got it in here, because I can never remember things when I'm standing in front of an audience. So, excuse me. Uh, there we are, that's what I wanted. So, the idea is that we can do this for other projects as well. Any, anything like Django CMS or Wagtail that gives you uh, an app, uh, um, a self-complete website. So content management systems like Wagtail and Django CMS are really important because I think that between us, Django CMS and Wagtail have brought more people to Django than probably any other kind of application because that's what ordinary people and businesses actually want. They want to be able to do something. There are plenty of very interesting and uh, important Django libraries, but it's the content management systems, uh, th these um, systems that are complete in themselves that solve problems for people that actually bring people to a language or, or a framework. Okay, so um, I hope the demos work for everybody who's tried it. Yeah, yeah great. Okay, well, there you are. Um, My colleagues did such a great job on that. Um, it's really amazing to see how the, the, the times for a deployment have, have slowly come down over the years. And I can't really say that much about what goes on inside to make this. I can say a bit about it, but most of it's a little bit beyond me, but it's pretty uh, impressive. So um, I know some of them are watching them, so I hope they're pleased to see that. Um, the other thing I can show you, right now here I'm logged in. So I can do the same thing as I just did. I could go to dvo.com slash wagtail. The difference is now that I'm already logged into my DVO Cloud account. And what's going to happen here, it's going to send me to our um, control panel. And now this time, instead of launching a demo, it's going to create a demo project for me in my um, account. So let's uh, create the demo project. Let me give myself a bit more room on here. That's, uh, that's, so I'll call this um, Wagtail Space Live Demo. And we've got various other settings here, but I'm just going to leave them all alone. What's happening here is that this project that I'm newly creating is being duplicated from our um, uh, source uh, Wagtail demo project. Now, what's going to happen first, it's going to provision the project. So it's going to set up uh, the database and the containers, because it's all based on uh, Docker, which I'll say a little bit more about that later. We've got uh, uh, a test server and a live server, so it's just preparing it. Um, it's going to commission the AWS uh, media buckets, um, it's, everything's based in Git, so you can just, just by creating it, I've, um, uh, I've got three commits in, in, in the project. Down here we have, um, uh, of interest, for example, domains to attach it to a live domain. Uh, we've got options for different server, live server settings. Um, we have our back backup system, we've got access to environment var variables, the kind of thing that you'd expect from a, a a deployment system. Let's just give this a moment or two to finish. Uh, there might be a, a queue, and that's why it's normally it's a bit quicker than this. Okay. There you are. Okay, so it's, that's probably done. Okay, so it's, it's now it's now ready to deploy. So I'm going to deploy the, the test server. This will be my private test server that only I get to see. Hit the button. What it's doing now is um, uh, building the uh, Docker images for the, uh, the Docker image for the web container, and because it's a cloud system and we're using Docker, for example, we can use uh, we can have multiple um, containers serving the same application, which means it's a good way of scaling rather than throwing uh, just more RAM and CPU <coughs> at, at uh, a website. You can just um, have it handled by multiple uh, containers. Um, this will normally take about three minutes. So I, while that's going on, I can, um, what's worth my showing you here? Um, if 
I can show you that uh, uh, we can have we have the concept of organizations, so I can have different collaborators working on uh, the projects in this uh, organization with me, so maybe my colleagues or somebody from client or something like that. I can find out everything that's in the, in the activity stream, everything that's actually happening. Um, I can get the Git logs of that if I want. Let's see if it's finished. It's the network's a bit slow. Yeah, I think. Let's give this a moment more. Oh, I know what I've done, of course. I've made the same mistake before. I, I, I created a new project in the wrong. I created it in my personal space. And this was a mistake. Let's um, find that project. Okay, it was, um, it was this one. Okay, so this is my newly created project and by now it should yeah it's finished deploying and I can launch the uh, test server we've got a single sign on and now I'm and there you are so now this is the same bakery project but now this is my project this is in my account I can uh, it will persist, it will be free, not forever, because nothing lasts quite forever, but it's going to last for um, a long time, and I'm going to be able to do all the things that uh, I need to do with it. And I can start adapting it and changing the content. I can um, get into the admin, and there's everything um, we had before. So now if I'm a new user, I've got an actual working site, a deployed site, that's also ready to deploy onto a live server that other people can see under a domain in just a few minutes. And, and that's quite empowering for people because that's a good way of getting over that last stumbling block from between development and actual deployment, and especially a reliable deployment because even if you do get the thing online, you tend to do it all wrong if you're not um, a DevOps expert. So I think this is going to be of real value to people who want to do things, not necessarily from scratch because they're not, um, uh, because they, they haven't done it many times as they would in an agency, but they just want to get started with um, something. Now, we can also uh, work with this um, locally because in my control panel, we've got a local, and we have a local development environment that matches the cloud environment. So I'm just going to copy this uh, command here. And what I'm going to do is get a little bit, a bit larger. I'm going to paste that. So let me go to my CD here. projects. And this is going to <coughs> set up the entire project right here on my own machine in a Docker container. Um, and it's going to pull down the database and the media files, and I can run it here. We've got some commands like the DBO uh, project setup command that allow me to work on it here. And this process is the exact same process that happens in the cloud deployment, which is quite good because one of the other problems that happens is that people, they have something that's working nicely locally, and then they set it up in a uh, live environment, which is different, and then everything stops working or starts working uh, differently. Oh, it's, it's quite quick. So um, it's just waiting for the um, database. And as long as I remember to shut down the other server, we should be fine. So it's, there you are, it's running the um, database migrations. That's probably a little glitch in the demo that I need to fix that we has, says we have some changes that are not reflected in a migration. Let's make that a bit larger. 
I'll just still. Um, pulling down the media files. Okay, and let's go into the uh, Whitetail space live demo, and I can do Docker. Pose up, and it's that's web is the uh, local web container. And now, if I go back to my web browser at localhost, and that's exactly the same thing that's running now on my on my local machine inside Docker that was running on the cloud. And if I open up the project. It's a pretty standard uh, Django project. Um, we have to, it's a little bit opinionated, so we have to work on the structure a little bit to make it possible to do these things, but it's pretty standard. And I can, for example, let me see if I can, I uh, can't make this text larger, but I can go into the static, I can go into, there's the CSS, so I can, um, let's say that I want the headings instead of, I want them to be in, Sounds of course. And now I've got a modified file in my Git repository, so I'm going to do git static, git change CSS, and then I'm going to git push. That's just pushing it up to the um, server. If we look here on the dashboard, I will now see that there is one commit not deployed, which is the one I just pushed up. And I can just deploy that. So it's going to run the um, uh, deployment again. And you can see the change that I've made here, by the way. I didn't show you that there. It looks better, doesn't it? Um, as soon as this is finished deploying, that will also be reflected on the site that's running up um, over here. So it's a, it's a workflow that developers will be fairly familiar with. We also have a DVO application, which actually does the same thing. So I can um, um, uh, have access to these commands to pull and push code and database and media. Uh, but through a, a graphical interface for, for people who, who prefer that. Um, how am I doing for time? I'm, I'm taking a little bit of your time, so I'm conscious that I'm between you and your lunch, which is always a dangerous place to be. Um, okay, the guy hasn't arrived yet. So. Okay. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. So, a captive audience is my favorite kind. So, um, so we've, we've got this very quite nice workflow that um, uh, also, I think, helps bridge that gap between the person who's managed to get something working locally and who needs to um, get it out there into the, um, into the real world. Uh, maybe that's finished. Uh, what else can we do with this? Um, let's go back to the, uh, and I'll tell you what I'll do, just to make things nicer. I will add this. I'm going to move this to the project where I should have created it in the first place. So. This is going to be in my wagtail space project. So I'm going to transfer it. And now I'm going to go. Sorry, wrong screen wagtail. So I should now, now I've got four projects there. Now I'm going to create a brand new uh, project because of course sometimes people don't want to start with a web, web uh, with a wagtail bakery site. They might want to start with a brand new project. So this is going to be a uh, plain old wagtail project, and I'm going to put it in this um, organization. I'm going to have it on our US region, Python three, of course. Uh, a wagtail site, and that's it. Um, let's create the project. And you've seen this happen already. And I'm, I'm going to show you this because it will introduce one of the things that makes all of this um, possible. So here's a plain wagtail project, um, provisioning it. And let's just give that a second. Now, the, actually, 
what I should do here is um, we've got what we have, we call this our add-on system, and it's a way of, <coughs> this is what we do here is possible because we are able to package Python Django applications in such a way that we can stitch them together and uh, deploy them through these various APIs and, um, okay, I, I know what's happened here, excuse me, that I, I hit a button too soon. Let me just, so this is a whitetail project. So this is what determines what of, which of our add-ons can be used with this project according to the uh, control panel. Of course, when you're working on your code locally, you have uh, freedom to do anything you like, but right now we're working with the APIs in the control panel. So let's see which add-ons are available for this project. Um, and one of the things I want to do here is, let's have a look at what's installed. I've got Django installed and I want to update that to Django 1.11, so I need to do that first. And let's change the version because 1.11 is not currently our um, default version. We have to be, Django itself is quite conservative and we also have to be even more conservative. So it means that by the time you've got two or three uh, parties in that chain, it means that you're working with things that are several versions out of date. And people don't always realize this when they are producing the software, how many steps there are to the actual users. Um, actually, Django, I think, is pretty good at maintaining this uh, chain of backwards compatibility so that people are not always racing to um, uh, keep up. So I've updated that. And what I would like to do now is I want to install a couple of things. You know when you create a brand new Wagtail project, you have to create a little home application. So um, I, on the train from New York, I turned that into a uh, New York kind of add-on, so I'm installing it now. Um, I'm just going to install. Um, I don't know if you know about this. You probably do. It's just a very basic extension of the... Um, uh, wagtail page model so that you can add additional fields and actually do things in your uh, uh, pages. And does anyone know Wagtail Puput? It's, I don't know. Yeah, it's a web blog for um, uh, Wagtail. Uh, they sent me some stickers, so there are some stickers there. I, now, unfortunately, I wanted to show you, the reason I'm doing it this way, I wanted to install Puput into the bakery project, but they both have a model called something like blog page or blog home or something like that. Anyway, they're incompatible. So maybe that's something that I'll be able to fix during this sprint that uh, I couldn't add it into there. So I've, this is why I'm doing it in this uh, plain old Django project. So now on my dashboard uh, for the project, I should have a few undeployed commits and including those two applications that I uh, just installed. So you can see all the commits that have added up to that. And I can deploy this. This is going to take a, um, there you are, it's started now. So that will take a, a, um, a few moments. Um, if I wanted to set that up locally right now, I could do the same thing. Um, let's go, if I refresh this, that should now be in, there you are, Comic Sans. That was the one I deployed a, a few moments ago. I can do two things at once. Um, so, I'm not going to make you wait for this one. So I've lost it already. Oh, it's, it's going to be finished deploying in uh, a minute or so. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll move on because um, I don't want to keep you too long. No sign of the pizzas yet? Um, they're on their way. They're on their way. OK, all right. Oh, okay, we, we, we nearly that. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for this one. It, it's, it's just about there. Um, as soon as that turns green, it's ready to be um, deployed. There you are. Okay. So, this is the brand new, plain old Wagtail site. Uh, we're back to our single sign on um, in a moment. In now. Or will we? Okay. 
so I can just go to the admin and there's the home. Oh look, this is something that I meant to show you. Um, the, the We're on Wagtail 2.0, that's the latest version of Wagtail on our system. One of the things I want to work on is to get it up to the latest version on our system at this uh, at the Sprints. So uh, here we are, we can create a new child page and there we are, we've got the two applications, the uh, weblog and the little home page application. So that's how quick it is to, when you have the applications, to roll out new sites um, based on them. I think that's all I wanted to show you in terms of the actual live demonstration, but of course I can show you more things if you have questions. So I'm just gonna go back to my slides and I'll, I'll quickly wrap through and uh, finish off. Well, nothing went really wrong. Um, so I showed you three things. Um, the video.com slash wagtail for the demo, so you can either have an anonymous, an, an anonymous demo that launches in a few seconds, or you can create a uh, wagtail bakery project of your own and then do with it as you wish. Or you can just create a new wagtail project or a Django CMS project or a plain Django project from your own account. Um, so that's Video Cloud. That's an artist's representation of it. I don't think that's actually what it looks like inside. But it's do dockerized Django hosting with all the bits um, joined up uh, together. I gave you a little glimpse of the development tools and the workflow that we have. It's all open uh, standards and uh, uh, tools, so it's pretty easy to take away a DBO cloud projects and deploy it somewhere else if you get sick of us, although that's not happened. Um, for deployment, we have this end-to-end -end wiring, so everything is, is stitched up and you don't have to worry about it. So the idea is that if you're a developer, you write the programs and we'll uh, deploy them. Uh, site reliability, that's probably our most important thing for us, that we have uh, engineers across SREs across the world, so there's always someone awake, and you can sleep, and, and we'll drive your website. This end-to-end -end wiring, this is what made what I showed uh, possible. So the the add-on system, which is uh, extremely clever and allows applications to configure themselves in Django projects, um, and I can sh there's more to it. I can show you that uh, if, if you're interested. Um, and really importantly, for projects like Django CMS and Wagtail, we can put these web applications right in front of new users, the ones who won't necessarily follow a README on GitHub or the documentation to get started. Uh, some of them will be small site owners, you know, people who don't have a development team, or maybe they'll be the business people or corporate web managers who aren't necessarily technical, but have an idea, or have a, a feel for what it is that they're looking for. For the developer, it does streamline development because it takes deployments uh, it makes deployment somebody else's problem, and it allows us to do some um, pretty interesting things. Why Wagtail? Because Devo is behind Django CMS, so Wagtail is a, a rival. Well, first of all, I've got a very soft spot for um, Wagtail because it was launched at the first conference I organized back in Cardiff in 2014. And um, I didn't actually know that um, Matt and Tom were going to launch uh, Wagtail. Well, that was quite a validation of, of, of my event, so to have this new, uh, very shiny uh, CMS launch there. Um, we are seeing a growing Wagtail user and developer community, and more people are asking us about uh, Wagtail for their uh, clients, development agencies who use uh, Divio Cloud. So it's important for us to uh, support it. Um, it's important for us to give those uh, agencies more easy options. And I think just code diversity all by itself is an important thing, that we should not be a, a monoculture of one uh, project. Uh, um, Why you might be interested in Video Cloud? Well, we have a partnership program, so these are different. Green blue deployment. Or for rollback or? Green blue deployment. It's a sort of, well, obviously, yeah. So okay. Yeah. Well, we, we have a, a stage server and a, uh, a live server, test and live. And we're going to be soon having an arbitrary number of servers in the pipeline. So you first deploy to locally on your machine, then to 
test and then to live. Uh, yes, we do have rollback because everything's in Git. We've got every, backups are made automatically, so you can revert to. Uh, I'd like to see a rollback button next to the. Word. You'd like to see? Okay, well, I'll, I'll mention that to our. <laughs> uh, I'll mention that to our, our, our team. Yeah. But yes, it is designed for that. So we take snapshots and. Uh, uh, it's quite easy to unmake a mistake. I always thought that DigitalOcean was the big poster. Are you competing with them? And I hope so. Different products. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, um, DBO is dedicated to Python and Django and nothing else. So you can actually deploy non Python uh, and non Django applications on our platform, but you're, you're, you might as well do that somewhere else that's not a specialist uh, provider. And I think that um, even with DigitalOcean, for example, although they provide many of the steps along the way, they don't join everything up. You're still responsible for that. And you would be responsible for the uh, site re reliability. Uh, you know, if your site goes down when you're asleep, I don't think. Maybe they do look after it for you, but. Mostly they just provide a server, so it's just, yeah. Yeah. They, have a, yeah. Kind of a, they have a couple of application types, but yeah, it's pretty much here. Here's a server, go do what you want to do. Uh, yeah. You've yeah. got to be a SS admin if you want. Yeah. So, you know, it's a slightly different space, but we hope that people might think that this is a good idea because then they don't have to worry about the deployment and the DevOps and, and, and so on. Um, if you have an existing application somewhere, is there a process for moving that into your uh, framework here? Or? Yes, and um, uh, sometimes it's very, very easy. And sometimes if the setup is a little bit uh, more, sometimes it can be more tricky, but it's basically a Django, it's basically a Django project. If I showed you what the project looks like, you would recognize it. Some things, for example, need to be uh, shifted into parts of our system so that our system can take care of them. So some of the things that you might have done manually might now, instead of configuration and settings, it might need to be uh, set up as environment variables, but nothing very, nothing very major. We've got some documentation on how to do that. But it's actually one of the things that I really want to improve in our documentation because if you're coming to it for the first time, it can be tricky. So that's one of the things that, uh, if you've got a project, I'd be happy to look at it with you because that will help me understand where people's pain points are. Thank you. This is a question. If I, if I have a domain uh, in Google and I want to create a black hill bakery uh, example and then have my domain pointed there, uh, and you have to sign up for an account. And, um, Everything's free okay. until you decide that you're going to deploy the live server with your own domain. Okay. So you can deploy the live server, but it'll still be on our domain until you start right. paying for it. But other than that, it's free. Yeah, there's a question on the, the Git work. So, uh, an example of a story that like, the local work went to test and then And how does something like hotfixes get handled? Um, you, you can set up different tracking branches for the different servers if you want to, as an option. But the standard workflow is it goes first to test and then you can choose whether to deploy it also to live. Hi, I saw that the Docker Compose file got copied down in the clone locally. Does that mean you can add containers to that and not log any behind the scenes on your end? So adding a Redis container, you could then configure your application to that. Scale as well. I don't think you can add arbitrary containers and deploy them on the cloud, no. Um, depending on what exactly you want to do, there might be an option to do it. Okay. Unless someone's absolutely desperate for a last question, I think something quite important has arrived. So um, try it out. I'd be really happy to hear how you get on with it and if there's any suggestions you can have. Thank you very much. and. Um,
would like to say uh, thank you very much to Tim and all the volunteers and for the, uh, the university for hosting us here. It's really nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.